Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. You know, it's very difficult to name a musician and composer from the last 50 years as prolific as the wonderful Quincy Jones. Quincy is a composer with many Grammys to his credit. He's a seven-time Oscar nominee. He's the recipient of the Academy's Gene Herschel Humanitarian Award. Well, since 8 p.m. Eastern, we've been taking a look at the film career of Quincy Jones with the add plus of Quincy being right here. Welcome, Quincy. Welcome back. Pleasure, man. Good to have you here. You You're part of the family now, you know. That's right. <laughs> we next have a movie called The Slender Thread. Interesting movie released in 1965, co-starring Sidney Poitier and Anne Bancroft. And the first feature film directed by Sidney Pollock. Was this a difficult score to write? Mm -mm. Well, they're all difficult, but you were passionate, you're passionate about it, so you're, you're loving every, everything, right. you, every move you make, you know. We wrote uh, a, 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 a song called Slender Thread that uh, we recorded with Johnny Mathis, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it's amazing. Sometimes they don't get in the picture, like the song that we wrote for, with the Bergmans for The Getaway didn't get in the picture, you know. But it's, it's always happenstance to right. every film. You never know how it's going to end up, you know. But there so, was that period also that every movie had to have a title song. That's right. Because they would help to get Even a record to promote Bond, it. Yeah, that helps yeah. to promote it, you know. Right. That's right. But the some are too dramatic to do. You couldn't put a song in, in uh, Pawn Broke if your life depended on right. it, you know, because it's just too dark. It shouldn't happen. Like having a, a, a title song on In Cold Blood. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no way. But some movies really stretch that. I know, that they really push it badly. Limits, you know? I agree. Yeah, to the detriment of the I film. I agree, I agree. And yeah. it, it makes the film cheesy, too. What's, what's the biggest pleasure you get out of the work you do? I was in art first before I was in, in uh, music. And even in music now, I've, I've said, I have a, a sickness called synesthesia, you know, which is, uh, when I th first start to think about music, I think about a charcoal sketch. Then I think about watercolors, and the music in terms of watercolors, because that's more st things that did and added to it. Uh, backgrounds, bass lines, drums, all of the, the, the characteristics of the song to get that together then I go to oil oil is finishing that means it's finalized you know you can either do representative scoring which is everything you see the music replicates that you know they run up the step they kiss they kiss it's everything but we used to go against that you know and have another thing over here which we learned from Fellini and people he'd have a uh, scene where you'd hear a boom, ping, ping, boom, boom, with a calliope. And, and at a carnival, everybody's having fun. And over there in the woods, there's a murder going on. Uh -huh. You know, they're totally contrast to that. But it pulls the audience in when you got the music over here and have the, the visuals over here, you know, and the sonic here, mm -hmm. the, the visual here. And it, uh, it's more dramatic, you know. That's, but it's a serious, fun science, it really is. Mm -hmm. And there's masses of it, too, with all my friends, you know. Mancini, Johnny Williams, and beautiful, beautiful musicians. Lalo, Dave Grusin, Johnny Mandel. Woo! Great musicians. Your crowd. Good crowd. So let's see the film. Here it is, also with Telly Savalas, Ed Asner, and a screenplay by Sterling Siliphant. From 1965, The Slender Thread. 